What's going on people? Welcome back to Blues Fan TV. Welcome back to another video. I put a tweet out yesterday asking for your unpopular opinions on Chelsea and you guys smashed it. You sent about 100, 120 different replies. So guys, this is Unpopular Opinions, the Chelsea edition. Let me know if you guys enjoy this video. But without further ado, let's go straight into your unpopular opinions. Jorginho is overrated and we'll never win the league with him at the base of our midfield. Now, I get Billy Gilmore's put him under a lot more pressure, but I still don't understand where all this Jorginho slander's coming from. I think he's been one of our best players this season. I think his ability to be in the right place at the right time, his range of passing, his leadership. Bruv, he, he's unmatching this team. and The Jorginho Kovacic pivot has been key to our success this season, so I don't see why people want to get rid of Jorginho. I've also said as well, Jorginho's stats would be a lot better if it wasn't for our attack. Our attackers killed so many good chances and we lack killer instinct. And I've said it so many different times. And I think if we have a better attack going forward, I think Jorginho's numbers improve as well. So, personally, nah, don't agree with this one. Chelsea 2009 under Gus Hiddink was probably our best attacking team. Now, Chelsea 2009 was a mad team. I ain't even going to say anything about that. But compare that to Ancelotti's Chelsea side if you want to talk about going forward I mean we broke records we got the most goals in the season I think we got the most league goals in the season we beat Stoke 7-1 I think we beat Villa 7-1 as well I might be mixing that as well I think we beat Stoke 7-0 instead Everton no not Everton Sunderland we beat 7-2 as well Wigan we beat 8-0 we won our first double under An Ancelotti I think it was Lampard's best season in a Chelsea shirt it was Drogba's best season in a Chelsea shirt as well I get 2009 was only going to be about six months before Ancelotti really joined but nah comparing it to Ancelotti's side nah it's unpopular I kind of get because it, it was close I don't think this is completely wrong but stats don't lie in it so I'm going to have to go with Ancelotti. Rudiger is our best defender. That is a strong take. That is a very strong take. I, do, I will say I think Rudiger's improved a lot over the last month or two. Well, I say the month or two. I mean the month or two before football got cancelled. But best defensive player, I'm not sure. I'm going to come up with my own unpopular opinion. I think Azpi's our best defender if you're looking at defensive abilities only. I still think he's got that ability about him. I think it's only going forward where he continues to let himself down. But we just know that's not part of his game. That's just the evolution of football. You're, you now ask a lot more of your fullbacks. You ask a lot more of your left backs and your right backs. Azpilicueta just can't answer those questions. Barkley was performing as good as Gilmore in the last two games before the pandemic. Barkley was performing good in the last two games. I'm not going to take anything away from him, but performing as good as Gilmore, nah. There's a reason why Gilmore got those two man of the matches in the in the last two games and Ross Barkley didn't. I'm not taking anything away from Ross Barkley's performance. He was brilliant against Liverpool. He was brilliant against Everton as well. But G Billy Gilmore was on another level. The composure of a 30-year-old. The guy looks like Jorginho only just a little bit quicker, plus could do with a bit more experience. But the confidence that this guy has... You don't get two man in the matches in your first two first team games unless you've got something about you. So Billy Gilmore is way better in my opinion. Chelsea's home support is declining in actual terms of genuine support. The boo boys and the social media experts who are shining CVs based on playing FIFA means that a minority of our home supporters are, ex are expectors, not actually supporters. The downside of success, I guess. Now, I get Chelsea's home support is is declining and I think that's the same for all home grounds across the Premier League that's just the way it is there's more money in football football's been Premier League football's been watched all across the world because there's more tourists that are willing to come down and watch Premier League football but they don't understand the experience they don't understand the chance they don't really get involved as much I'm not blaming tourism because that's just gonna come off as a little bit racist if I say that but it's just an effect it's just an effect and you can't blame it it's just an effect of what happens doesn't mean it needs to stop it's just an effect to call them expectors, though, based on success, I mean, it depends on which way you want to look at it. If you're an older Chelsea fan, you would have seen Chelsea at their worst and Chelsea at their best, and you wouldn't really be too angry at the position that we are. Whereas if you've come in in the Roman Abramovich area, you are used to success. And when you see a lot of success, you do want to maintain it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to maintain success. Everyone wants the best for their club. So if you want to keep the success going... I'd I don't think that's plastic or anything. Callum hudson Doy still has a lot to prove and doesn't deserve to start yet. I think he'll get more game time now because William and Pedro look like they're on their way out. But if you're basing this off his performances this season, I kind of get you. Loki, he is still coming off that Achilles injury, which is why I, kept, I keep saying give him this season to recover. 
and I think he deserves that. But he still does have a lot to prove. And if it weren't for William and Pedro leaving, I wouldn't mind him going on loan for a season. I was thinking about that towards the start of the season. I'm thinking the guy needs a lot more game time at a Premier League club that will give him consistent game time and probably needs to rely on him a little bit more because you want him to step into that into those footsteps of being one of the best players at a club because that's the potential that we see him at for Chelsea. So I think the best thing for him could be to send him down to a lower mid-table Premier League club where he could be one of the best players in that team and he gets a feeling of what it means like to be one of the best players on the side and then it's just about taking a step up to Chelsea again. So Loki, I wouldn't mind him seeing him go on loan. He does have a lot to prove. Does he deserve to start yet? Yeah, if William and Pedro are going, he's going to see a lot more game time. If Sarri was given two more years and more money to build his team, he could have won the Premier League. I agree with this if you take away the transfer ban as well. I think the transfer ban is a big reason for Maurizio Sarri leaving because you could see the fans weren't supporting him towards the end of the season. And I think if you see the way we're going into this season with no transfer ban and Eden Hazard potentially on his way out, I don't blame Maurizio Sarri for washing his hands of the situation and saying I can't really do much because... We wouldn't. I don't think we would have done what we've done under Lampard under Sari. I think with a lot more youth players, I think with Sari basically having to redo the entirety of last season where he was trying to transition the team, I don't think it would have worked. I also think, as much as I'm, I was Sari in the whole time, the guy is very stubborn with his lineup. I don't think we would have seen a lot of youth players playing, or if they came in, they would have been integrated too slowly, and we would have just seen William and Pedro for weeks on weeks. So. I, I really wanted to see Sari succeed, but the writing was on the wall. It wasn't going to happen. I'm just glad he got a happy ending. Thomas Kalash should have been given more time and a fair shot at Chelsea after putting Luis Suarez in his pocket. Yes, he should have, but Mourinho. So we all know exactly what was going to happen. As much as I love Jose Mourinho, and I still don't have hate for him, even though he's gone to Tottenham because he still hasn't said anything about Chelsea fans yet, that second spell set us back a long time. Just for the sell, just for selling De Bruyne and Lukaku on its own, it's it set us back a good two, three years, and we're still regretting selling De Bruyne. Thomas Callas should have been given more of a fair shot. I think there's plenty of other players that also should have been given a fair shot and didn't. Mohamed Salah mm, were not really going to work. If I'm being honest, I can't even sell that to you. Another one though is Ryan Bertrand. I think he could have been a great player at Chelsea. And if you look at the left backs that we have right now. It wouldn't really been that bad to get rid of Ryan Bertrand. I mean, to keep Ryan Bertrand and give him a fair shot, would it? But Jose's second spell. We won a league title, which I'm not going to complain about, but Jose did a hell of a lot of damage. Hilario, our goalkeeping coach, and Lampard's defensive organisation is the reason why Kepper is doing poorly this season. Part of the reason. It is part of the reason. I, I'm not going to put too much into it because I think it's a lot of different factors. I'm not going to say it's solely Hilario because Hilario was our goalkeeping coach the season before that and Kepa got the third highest clean sheets in the league. Lampard's offensive organisation, it is a bit of a part. I mean, he hasn't he hasn't had the same back four in consecutive games for ages. It is also partly Kepa's fault as well. It is also partly the defence's fault. But this is why I'm saying no one blame Kepa for it because there's so many different factors to it. How can you just put it on the goalkeeper? There's plenty of other different factors to why we've been so poor defensively this season. And it's about five players' jobs to keep the ball out of the net, not just a goalkeeper. And I think everyone's made mistakes. Defensively, we've all been poor, and they all are to blame. Kovacic is our best player this season. Bro, this ain't unpopular. I'm being serious. If you open up player of the season votings for Chelsea right now, Kovacic wins by a landslide. If you vote, if you opened it three months ago, he still wins by a landslide. Hell, if you opened it in October, probably still wins by a landslide. Kovacic is our best player of the season by a mile. Some opinions are mad. Some of them, we've got a pretty decent discussion out of them and I ain't even looked at the other half of them yet. So we're going to save that for another video as well because this one's dragging on for a little bit. Let me know what you guys think about some of my opinions down in the comment section below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with them. Let me know if you guys have any other opinions down in the comment section below. If they're good enough or if they're bad enough. They might even make the next video as well. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Blues Fans TV as well. And we'll see you guys very, very soon. Up the chels.